Hi guys! So for today's devotional, we're going to be talking about Jesus as our perfect high priest. But before we get into Jesus as our high priest, I think it's really important for us to understand the Levitical priesthood that the Lord put in place during the time of Moses. So these priests were chosen specifically from the tribe of Levi, and they were spiritual representations for their people, and these men mediated the covenant of God with the nation of Israel. And the Hebrew root of the word priest actually means to stand, so these priests stood in place of their people, on behalf of their people before the Lord. One of their main jobs and tasks as priests was to tend to the tabernacle, or the house of the Lord. So God instructed the nation of Israel to erect a tent, a place where the Spirit of the Lord could dwell. And this tent was separated into two rooms, the holy place and the holy of holies, which was where the Ark of the Covenant was kept and the thick, raw presence of God dwelled. Now, the presence of God was so heavy that the holy place and the holy of holies had to be separated by a thick veil from floor to ceiling. And the only person that could go into the holy of holies was a high priest, and he could only go one day a year on Yom Kippur or the Day of Atonement. On this day, he would go into the holy of holies, into the presence of God, and he would offer sacrifices for the sins of his people. He would atone for the sins of his nation. And this Levitical priesthood was a reminder to the nation of Israel of the holy requirements of God. Now that we understand a little bit about the Levitical priesthood, now we can really get into Jesus as our perfect high priest. So Jesus was not only the perfect sacrificial lamb, but he was also the perfect high priest. So Levitical priests were appointed by God, but they were still sinful men. They still had their sinful flesh. So they would have to day in and day out continually offer sacrifices, not only to atone for the sins of their nation, but also to atone for their own sins of their own flesh of the temptation that they gave into on a daily basis. But Jesus was completely sinless from birth to death to resurrection. There was not sin in him. So when he gave his life for us, his blood covered the debt of sin once and for all. So not only was the sacrifice that Jesus gave superior to any sacrifice an earthly priest could give, but the high priest who gave the sacrifice was superior to any earthly high priest. Jesus came not only to fulfill the old covenant and establish a new covenant, but he did what earthly priests could not do, and he established a new priesthood in his perfection. So when Jesus sacrificed himself, he brought a new covenant, a better covenant. And just as the Levitical priests mediated the old covenant with the people of Israel, Jesus mediates the new covenant with us. And this makes his ministry better, this mediation better than what the Levitical priests could do. And the beautiful thing is that Jesus is our mediator. And the Greek root of that word mediator actually means the one who stands in the middle of two people and brings them together. So he's bringing us to the Father as he mediates this new covenant. And even as the high priests came and go, as they died and a new one was risen up, Jesus is our eternal. He's our eternal high priest. Jesus literally passed through the heaven, and he's now in the throne room interceding on our behalf. He's not defending us against condemnation because his blood took care of that, but he is constantly and forever representing us before the Father. So when God sees us, he doesn't see our sin. He sees the blood of Jesus. So he's representing us and he contends for us against our enemy, our adversary. His priesthood is not only perfect, but his priesthood is eternal. And so now that he's established this new priesthood and he is our high priest, he's actually invited us into the priesthood. I love 1 Peter 2.9. It says, but you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for his own possession, that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. So the beautiful thing is that in Hebrew tradition, the priesthood was reserved only for the tribe of Levi. And even then, not all, Le not all Levites were appointed to be priests. So these Levitical priests were the only ones in the entire nation of Israel who had access to the presence of God. But when Jesus died on the cross and offered the most perfect sacrifice as our most perfect high priest, the veil that separated the holy place and the holy of holies ripped in two from top to bottom, which released the presence of God. 
So by releasing the presence of God and now inviting us into that priesthood, we not only have the Spirit of the Lord dwelling inside of us, but we now have full and complete access to the presence of God. This sacrifice and perfected priesthood established relationship with the Father. So now that we know that Jesus provided the perfect sacrifice as our perfect priest, established a new priesthood and is inviting us into that, we now know that we can boldly and confidently come before the throne of grace. Hebrews 4.16 says, Let us then with confidence draw near to the throne of grace, that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. I think a lot of times it's so easy for us to forget our identity, to forget that the Lord paid for everything, that he was our perfect priest. So we need to remember that every person who hears the gospel, who says yes to Jesus and receives salvation, is now invited into that priesthood and invited in as sons and daughters to be priests. We need to live our lives as if we have been covered by the perfect sacrifice and by the perfect priest, that we have complete unhindered access to the Father. Let us remember that he hears us. He hears every word we have to say and we have total access. There's nothing cutting us off from the presence of God. And it's so beautiful. We have complete access. Love you guys. Bye.